Google Forms facilitate the transfer of data between the form creator and the form user. In other words, teachers can create forms to gather information from their students. In the context of assessment, Google Forms allow teachers to create quizzes, tests, and any other form of assessment consisting of various types of questions. That assessment data is stored in a spreadsheet that the teacher has access to for efficient grading and analysis. Let's look at how to create a Google Form as an assessment and how to send it to your students. At a very basic level, the process of creating and implementing a form looks like this. The teacher creates the form and provides students with a link to the form. Students fill out the form and their responses are automatically sent to a pre-made spreadsheet in the teacher's Google Drive. Most of the time, Google will automatically create this response spreadsheet as soon as the form is created. Let's build a simple five question quiz. First, open your Google Drive and navigate to the folder where you'd like the form to reside. Click New and select Google Forms. You may need to hover over the More first, but it's in there. A new tab will open in which you can edit the form. Before we look at creating individual questions, let's become familiar with the three main sections of the form editor, form settings, questions pages, and the confirmation page. The form settings section provides you with some options about how the form will work. Requiring a Denton ISD login to view means that the person filling out the form has to be logged in to their DISD Google account. If a login is required, you can also automatically collect the respondent's DISD username if you'd like for the response to not be anonymous. Showing the progress bar only applies if there are multiple pages of questions in the form. Allowing one response per person means exactly what it says, but requires that the person be logged in to verify their identity. You can also shuffle the question order, which sounds great for assessments, but isn't that great in practice as some of your questions will be the student's name, class period, etc., and you probably don't want these fields mixed up with assessment questions. Talk about confusing. At the bottom of the page, you have access to options for the confirmation page, the page that the user will see once they've submitted the form. You can change the message that respondents see from your response has been recorded to something a little more customized for your specific form. I'd be careful about what you check in this section. If you check the publish and show a public link for form results option, students will be able to see everyone else's answers after they submit their assessment. Yikes. The middle section of the form editor is the bread and butter of Google Forms. Here you will create your questions and decide how they will be asked of the student. Click on Untitled Form to edit the name of the form and add any instructions for this assignment by clicking Form Description right below. Now we have the question editor. Let's look at each part of the question editor to become more familiar with it as we move forward. The question title box is where you put the actual question. Help text is there for you to add clarification if you'd like to. For example, the question title may be name, and the help text may say last, comma, first. Next, you have the question type. Open this drop-down to see the different types of questions that you can ask. For now, let's stick with multiple choice. The checkbox next to go to page based on answer is an advanced feature we won't be covering here, but it's definitely worth checking out if you'd like to make dynamic forms in the future. Now we have our answer choices. Click option one to add the first answer choice. You can add more answer choices by clicking Click to add an option in the field below. If you'd like to remove an answer choice, just click the X to the right of the box. Next, click on Advanced Settings. These settings can change based on the type of question you're asking. In the case of multiple choice questions, we have the option to randomize the order of the answer choices, a la Form A and Form B for paper tests. If you check Required Question, the person filling out the form will not be able to submit the form without answering this question. This is a great way to prevent the digital equivalent of, I didn't know there were questions on the back of the page. Before we click Done, let's look at the three icons in the top right corner of the question editor. The first one toggles between editing the question and not editing the question. Clicking the Next button will duplicate the question directly below. This is great if you're making a digital Scantron and need to make a bunch of ABCD questions all in a row. The last button allows you to delete the question. Let's click Done and finish our first question. What if we want our assessment to have more than one question? That seems like a sound pedagogical idea, so let's add another question. Click the triangle next to the Add item to see our options for the new question. You'll notice the number of things we can add to our form has increased over what we saw when we clicked Question Type earlier. Not only can we add a basic question, like the ones listed on the left, but we can add advanced type questions as well as items that aren't questions at all, but can add a layer of customization to our form. A section header allows for multiple sections within a form. 
For example, you can add a section header between the name and class period questions at the beginning of a form and the actual assessment questions after. Page breaks will allow you to create forms with multiple pages. In other words, with page breaks, you can take a 30 question quiz and break it into three pages with 10 questions and next buttons that will take you from the page with questions 1 through 10 to questions 11 through 20 and 21 through 30. Images and videos can also be added to add a multimedia element to your assessments. This is a great option for teachers that rely on items other than text for assessment questions. Things like math problems and charts can be saved as images and uploaded to a form to use with questions. So, we've built our form and we have it exactly like we want it. Now let's have a little fun with the look of the form. Click on the Change Theme near the top of the page. On the right side of the screen you'll see a window open. These are different aesthetic themes that you have access to that can make your form look as delightful as you'd like. You can use one of these prepackaged themes or you can even customize it further to your liking. That's completely up to you. Once you've decided on a theme, click Edit Question on the left side of the screen to go back to the question editor. Now we have questions and we have a form that looks really cool. From there, all we need to do is get that form in the digital hands of the people that need to fill it out, your students. Click the Send Form button in the top right corner of the screen to get a link to the form that you can send to your students. If you're feeling really daring and you'd like to embed the actual form in a website, rather than sending out or posting a link, click the Embed button to get the HTML code to embed the form in your website. Now what happens after you've made the form and the students start filling it out? Well that data is deposited into an automatically created spreadsheet right there in Google Drive as well. Sometimes the spreadsheet is created the instant that you create the form, but sometimes it isn't. You can check to see where your responses are going by clicking Responses. If the drop-down has an option that says Change Response Destination, your response spreadsheet has already been created. If it says Choose Response Destination, your response spreadsheet hasn't yet been created and you can click that option to create it. Regardless, the response spreadsheet will live in the same place as your form in Google Drive. As people fill out the form and submit their responses, data will begin to appear in real time and you can begin your analysis of your students' responses. And that, my friend, is how to create a Google Form. I hope this information was helpful.